Hi, my name's Ed Gregory for Photos in Color, and today we're going to have an exciting look at the tone curve in Lightroom 5 and how it can help you be more creative with your photos. This is where the theme tune happens, yeah! Okay, so we're going to go straight into Lightroom and have a look. So here we are. The tone curve is set just down here underneath the basic panel. Okay, we're going to be using this photograph of Lucy Scarf, wonderful model from the UK, to look at exactly what this does. Okay, now the tone curve works independently of the basic module. So any Thing that you make an edit of here so for example your exposure your shadows and your whites and things that all affect your histogram do not affect your tone curve and that's the same the other way around so anything that you change in the tone curve okay does not affect the basic panel however both do affect your histogram which is a visual read readout of your colors and your luminosity of your images Okay, so let's look at the tone curve and what it does. The tone curve looks at the luminosity of your images, okay, and it breaks it down into four sections basically in the basic panel, and that is your highlights, your lights, your darks, and your shadows. And what that does is it breaks it off, and as you can see as I slide up and down this, it, it gives me different highlight sections, and that shows me what I'm going to be editing. So for example, if I'm all the way at the end here, this is going to edit my shadows. And all I need to do is drag this up, okay? And you see the shadows in this image are going to go lighter. Or conversely, I drag this down, okay? And they're going to get darker. And I can just move through each section. So your lights and darks are all in this mid-tone area. And then your highlights all the way at the top end, okay? All the edits that you make on this line are shown below on all of these different sliders okay so if i move the darks you can see that that mid-tone section is all going to move basically it allows me to change the luminosity of different parts of the image which is fantastic for being creative now that is just the beginning because you can actually do a lot more things with this than than you may initially think for example if you click this button here Okay, I'm just going to reset all of these sections just by double clicking on them. Okay, very simple. And all you need to do, if you select this down here, okay, this is what it's going to do is get rid of those sliders. And now you can slide this and create your own points. So for example, if I was to select the middle and move it up, it's going to move my midtones up and down like so. And you can see that in the image over here. But if, so if I was to boost these midtones up a little, for example, which may be kind of like the exposure of the image, okay? Now, if I go to the highlights and click, and then move down, you can see it's added another point. This first point that we have does not move, okay? So now I can move my highlights up and down. And what I can also do is my shadows, for example, is do the same thing. Now, interestingly with this, you can make a lot of, points very quickly and end up with a wacky looking image. I'll give you an example. If I set this back to linear and I quickly go along here and go highlights up a little, the next section down, then I'll put my midtones up, my highlights down, the very top of the highlights down, and maybe just move this around. All of a sudden, I've got this crazy image that doesn't look like anything. So you've got to be very careful with how many points you add and how many how they move in opposition to each other. The more zigzags you get, as you can see here, there's lots of zigzags, the stranger the image is going to look. Does that make sense? So, for example, with this image, what I might want to do is, as we did before, we can move these things around. But what I'm moving is the red, green, and blue all of the whole image but this is where the tone curve gets really exciting because you can actually edit the red the green the blue independently of each other which is also independent of the basic settings which are in the panel just above here and i'll give you an example of this so i can create what is kind of a split toning effect by going to the red and maybe I want the red section, okay, which you can see by the what's shown behind here is mainly the shadows and the highlights. So I might want to add a point here. Okay, in fact, I'm going to 
delete this point. So if I go right click, delete control point. So I've added a point there and then I might want to add another one here. So all I'm going to do is place one in between and I'm going to lift my reds in that section here. Now then, I'm going to go to, for example, green and it's in a similar place. And I'm just going to add green to the highlight. So I'm going to add two control points to lock those off pretty much. And then I'm just going to lift my highlights like so. But I want, I'm going to bring that back actually. So you can see now I've almost got a split toning effect with greens in the highlights and reds in the shadows. And that's just getting a little bit creative with it. And I really like the look of this image. Now, I'm going to, again, reset this and show you something else that you can do. Something that you cannot do in the basic panel. Now, we like to make all of these effects to make, to copy some film effects from the 60s and 70s and things like this. A lot of the time, you want to make an image very uncontrasty. Okay, but if I just change the contrast up here, you can see it kind of just flattens the image and doesn't make it look very exciting. So what we can do is we can, what we call change the clipping. So we come down to the cone to, tone curve. I'm gonna go back to RGB again and watch what I'm going to do. I want this image to have less contrast and have a real old feel. Now remember, I'm not going to make any other edits apart from the tone curve. All I need to do is I'm gonna add in a couple of markers here and here so that it's only going to change my highlights and my shadows. I'm going to take this one, I'm going to add some clipping, okay? So that means I'm going to take away all of my shadows completely down here. And then the top section, I'm actually going to take away all of my highlights. And can you see, just by doing this, this image has got this fantastic old world feel, yet I haven't got rid of any of the colors in the image. And that's how this really can be creative. So you can see in just a few steps how exciting the tone curve is because I can leave this section now because I like it, come back to my basic and I can make a few other adjustments. For example, take my contrast down, my highlights down a little bit to bring some stuff back, lift my whites, blacks, I'm kind of happy with where they are, okay? And I can also, I can change well, I'm not going to do that, but I can. I could have changed my um, my color grading on that, my temperature and my tint. But very quickly, I've changed an image using only the tone curve. And that is really what you can do with it. You can make some initial edits using the basics, using your histogram, and then go in afterwards and use that cone to, tone curve to really make some fine adjustments or be creative by making some split toning effects or using some clippings. My name's Ed Gregory for Photos in Colour. If you've liked this quick look at the tone curve, then please give me a thumbs up at the bottom. Head over to Photos in Colour, where not only do we do tutorials, but I give news from the photography world each day. So go and have a look at that. Thank you very much for watching. If you haven't got our free photography guide to taking better travel photos, you should go over to the website right now and do it. It's really simple. All you do is go to photosincolor.com, find this box on the right hand side, type in your first name, your last name and your email address and I will send you this amazing free guide to taking better travel photographs via email. Here it is just here with great travel tips like ignore tourists or using creative focus to create better photos. So just sign up right now. 